Hello Tab Nation, it's your boy Tom and today we're going to be doing version 2 message boxes. So we got a lot going on, they're very helpful, um, very easy to code too compared to like a GUI. Uh, we'll also be talking a little bit about version 1, most of my videos are going to be both version 1 and version 2 kind of information. If you like this video type of video, hit the like button because it lets me know what kind of videos to keep doing and yeah let's jump into it shall we so message boxes they're great super simple and you know we're going to kind of run through a bunch of different like little tricks you can do i will be doing another video later on where i go a little bit more in depth to the settings i like to keep my videos not too long uh, that way you can eat them up in pieces or watch them all at once more diverse stuff i audience so, our first hotkey here is F1. <clears throat> now, obviously, in version 2, a big difference, uh, probably one of the biggest difference that people have to get used to, is everything's a function now, so you have to make sure you're putting curly brackets everywhere. Now, one thing that's cool about this is because of this, I don't, you might notice, I don't have any returns in my code because I don't need them. In version 1, you do need the returns because unless you are creating a function, but a lot of times you're not. Uh, I'll show you an example of the differences there. So message box is pretty simple. All of them are going to just be MSG, B-O-X. Uh, the B um, doesn't have to be capitalized, it just looks better. And then we're going to put things in quotations. So you have to put them in quotations. That's a big difference between V1. Uh, V1, you didn't have to do that. Uh, because if you wanted to do a variable, you just put it into percent signs. We'll talk about that in a minute, too. So in quotations, we're doing just tab nation. We're doing a comma. And this is like a setting. So a box, that's actually the title of the box. If I didn't have this here, which you'll see here, it would just be called whatever the script's name is. But maybe we don't want that. Maybe we want to call it warning or something. So, But we're just going to call it a box. Because why not? So I'm going to go ahead and run the code here real quick so we can start going through these. So I'm going to run this in version 2 first. So I'm going to push F1. So as you see, we got tab nation, a box. Simple. Press OK. And as you notice, it didn't go here. But... Let me close that one out. Watch what happens when I do it in version 2, because everything would need a return. I'm going to press F1, and look, the settings are completely different, so it doesn't even do that. It thinks the whole thing is a string. Now, let me go ahead and push OK. Look at this. It's literally running through the entire script. So in version 1, you are going to need a return. But in version 2, for something like this, you're not going to need a return. So that's a big thing, is people have been asking me, why don't you have any returns? Isn't your code going to mess up? Not in version 2. In version 2, you're good. For the most part. Alright, next one. This one is F2. Did I run it in version 2 again? There we go. Now, if you do just message box with nothing else, you get the system default, which is just press OK to continue. This could be a good thing for using if you want to temporary, temporarily pause your script until the person is ready to continue. So this is a great way, super simple, just literally message box, and it'll stop here. That way they can, you know, if they need to walk away, come back, and they're like, okay, now let's continue the script. Okay. So that one I can see being useful just for that. It's simple. Or if you want to add your own message, go up there. Now with F5, as you see, I did uh, line 1, line 2, line 3. A title, we're keeping that. I also added an icon. So you do another comma, and these are like kind of more settings. So icon I, that's information. If you go to the message box for version 2, here are the icons and what their string is. So I'm using... This one right here, icon I. It's for information or info. And if you want to know if I don't link this in the description below, that's because you should be downloading my Chrome extension. You can sit here and literally go search documents, message box, 
go and it'll take you right to the page. So download it, please. And let me know what you think. Anyway, back to the video. Now, obviously, I don't want it to do this because if I do push F5, it's all on one line. I don't want that. I do have that info icon. I did get the AI title. So what I'm going to do is with F3 here, once again, we're creating a function. We're going to do message box quotations at the beginning and end. And we're using these parentheses now. And this allows me to do line one, two, and three and write it out in a much easier way. Like in version one, a lot of times I would see people using, uh, doing this to do line breaks. I think that's a terrible way to do it because it just looks messy as you go through and do it. And it, everything would be on one line, less readable. This is more readable way of doing it. Once again, still keeping that a title and icon. So we're going to push F3, and voila. Now everything is on its own line. It's formatted how it's showing here. I love doing it this way. It's just, it's when it comes to the code, it's it's way more readable than doing line breaks, uh, the built-in line breaks. But yeah, you can change this icon here to five different ones or whatever it was. I forget. I already closed it out. But yeah, so that is just a cleaner way of formatting your code. Next, how to put a variable in there, because up here I could in version one do this. I could do like variable name and it would have worked. But in version two, that's not going to cut it. We're gonna wanna do it in a much better way. This is more standard to other languages and how they do it. So we're declaring our variable here, make sure uh, in version one, you could do just an equal sign. In version two, you can't really do that. You do need to put the little uh, dots there. Ah, save. So we're doing message box. We're doing the same thing here. We're quotations. The answer is, make sure you put a space here because then is five would be together. So you need to put the space here. Quotations. So this is our string. And then whatever's outside of the quotations checks to see if it's a variable it, or it is a variable and then we want to go back to adding to the string so once again we're then going to do quotations and put some text in here so then we're going right back in so just put the variables outside of a string it can get a little weird if you're putting a lot of variables in and going you'll have a lot of quotation marks but yeah f5 or f4 for this one there we go the answer is five views hopefully this video gets way more than that so yeah, there's that. And I think this is probably going to be one of the biggest ones that people would struggle with is trying to get that to work. Now the next one is we're going to be using F1 here. This is a different script. Let me close out the old one. We're doing F1 here. Put it in a function. Result. So we're going to create an object here. Message box. Timeout is five seconds. Continue. And then we're creating a yes, no uh box so the buttons will say yes or no and then t5 means five seconds so that's a little weird for me because i miss kind of using the milliseconds um versus just solid five seconds it's kind of weird uh, but whatever so yeah this is going to ask us yes or no well now we push a button it needs to perform different actions based on whatever they clicked so first we're going to do timeout so if result equals timeout meaning they didn't do anything in five seconds, they didn't push a button, close it out, <clears throat> do this. And we're just going to have a say it, you didn't press yes or no within five seconds. Else if result, so we're putting that in quotations equals, once again, quotations, or sorry, parentheses here. So make sure you're putting that or it'll think it's a variable. Uh, if they click no, message box if you pressed no or you press no we could also change this add another one another else if that says if they press yes do this um so we could we could do that we could add that if we wanted to but we're not going to so let's go ahead and run version two on that we're going to press f1 and there you go I'm not going to push anything boom you didn't press yes or no within the five second period. Let's press it again. 
I'm going to press yes. Well, I don't have a result equals yes, so nothing happened. It just closes the box, basically. It's basically just exiting out. So that could be useful. Uh, so if that could be useful if you did something like this. Actually, it's a good idea to show that. That could be useful if they push no. You don't want anything to happen. Why write the code for the no? But they press yes. You press yes. Uh, so yeah, there's all that. And uh, like I said, plan to do another video in the future where I go a little bit more in depth into like the settings of a message box. If you guys have something specific you want to see, definitely let me know in the comments below. And I will see you all on the next one.